All right. I'm not gonna go in some, into some large ramble why the new Thomas sucks complete ass. Cause you all know why. What I do want to explain is to those stupid people out there who are saying, oh, why are you getting so warm? It's just a freaking kid show. All right. Something like that. Watch this. And listen to what I have to say. Basically, this is a video explaining why this new stuff sucks ass. And why we go back. We Thomas fans go back and watch Thomas. This is unscripted. So if I sound a little, I don't know, stupid in some parts or stuff like that. Sorry, but all right, here we go. First off, reasons why this new Thomas sucks. I'm not going to go on some large rant. I'm just going to say why it sucks. It's way too cartoony for Thomas. Like, just look at that. You know, like this doesn't even look like an engine. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mind lack of railway realism but sometimes it gets way too out of freaking hand like what they're doing with the show now i mean just look at that he has no freaking side rods or any i mean look at that the fucking whistle it looks so fucking dumb it just looks so stupid fucking face yeah i know some normie is probably thinking oh relax a little kid might like it if they never seen thomas before okay that might be true but what about some little kid that has seen Thomas before? They might look at this and be like, what the actual hell? Like this just, why does it look so different compared to the other stuff that I'm used to watching? You know, that's what I imagine a little kid who does know what Thomas is. They would look at this and they would have that reaction. You know, you know what I mean? And one thing, oh, the little kid might like it. Okay, that might be true. But just because a little kid who has never seen Thomas in their life might like it does not mean that it's good for them or they deserve it. With the classic episodes, like Duncan Gets Spooked, and the ghost story, Rusty, Rusty's ghost story, they basically show little kids and engine drown and die. Yeah, it's fucked up. But guess what? It challenges young viewers. It's not like they did it in a way that was graphic or anything. Yeah, they showed the engine die, basically. But it was for a ghost story. Like, they don't tell you if it's real or not. Like, ever in the episode. So that challenges young viewers. It makes them feel different emotions. Yeah, Tom, the only, in the early episodes, was mostly lighthearted. But here's the thing. It wasn't always this goofy, wacky... The cartoony bullshit that you're seeing right now. It had actual freaking substance to it. Stuff that little kids will like. And as they get older, they might watch an episode and realize something that they didn't notice when they were kids. And they'll like it even more because of that. For example, Cranky Bugs. I'm um, in that episode. Cranky is a ass to Thomas and Percy. And, um, Cranky got his comeuppance, Once to Tom Hat, thinks they're the ones that are being assholes and sends them to the shed to think about the way they can improve themselves. And then, that night, where Gordon, Duck, James, and Henry at sheds, a boat crashes into the shed, the dock, and Cranky falls. And then Gordon... After all the engines get freed, when Cranky was lifted right up again, Gordon was actually the only one to say thank you to Cranky. And in season one, he was very rude when he, when Edward held him up the hill. He didn't say thank you at all. He's like, boop, I done it. I did all the fucking work. But in Cranky Bugs, he was like, oh, thank you. What would I have done without you to Cranky after they lifted all of the shed? And Duck, James, and Henry, they didn't say thank you at all. Gordon was the only one to say thank you. 
I mean, I loved that episode when I was a kid. Don't get me wrong. I did really did. But now that I'm older, I can appreciate that episode more. Not because of how entertaining it is, how cool Cranky is as a character. Because, you know, he's high up in the sky and he's always getting mad about everything. Which makes sense. I mean, who wouldn't be cranky all the time if you're stuck up there? But I can also appreciate it for the character development that we see from the characters we already know. That being Gordon in that moment. Because it shows that he's a lot more grateful for what he already has. For what he does have. Showing that he's a lot more grateful since the first season. Showing that Gordon has actually grown up a lot since the first season. You know, in that episode. He's the only one to actually say thank you to Cranky. And then Edward and Gordon didn't say thank you at all to Edward after he held him out. But in Cranky Bugs, the first episode of season 5, he did. So that shows that he's really grown up since the first season. So yeah. Um, Alright, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, not only that. But the classic series, which whenever it did go into an unrealistic route with its episodes, it treated them with respect, with so, not respect, but maturity and stuff. You know, like it was in a way where it was treated with so much maturity that it didn't feel like a freaking babyish piece of shit. Like Rusty in the Boulder. Like. That episode was actually very dark. Like, it's kind of like Dunkin' Gets Boot. I'm using a lot of Season 5 examples, but... Still, Season 5 is my favorite season along with Season 4 and 6. Because it's a perfect example of how adults and kids can enjoy Thomas. Rusty and the Boulder. Um, They're building a new quarry, and up there is a real mysterious boulder. And Rusty thinks it's watching him. And then a rock fell to the ground when he was just watching it when the rain was starting to fall. And then Boulder, Rusty thinks his Boulder wanting us to go away. And the driver pulls Rusty back. And we see the Boulder's face. And the next day, Thumper, the machine, was like working on the rock. And then Rusty sees the Boulder move. Rusty sees some gravel coming from the Boulder. And he thinks the Boulder's going to move. And the driver said he can't, but, but it could. And then it starts rolling down the line. Cutting a lot of bull crap, and then it damages the shed, and that's the person. There's like a huge explosion, and so Tom Hat looks at the boulder, saying, "We should have let the, this party island alone." And he, the boulder, stands up on the hill, proud and silent, on a hill that's you know next to the mountain he used to stand on, and he still has a face, and Rusty is still looking at it. So the episode doesn't tell us if the boulder is alive or not. He said, the narrator says, I wonder if Rusty's right, don't you? So, it could be that Rusty is just a fucking nut job and it's just hallucinating that the boulder has a face, but it may not. You know, like, they never say if the boulder is alive or not, or if just Rusty is a lunatic and it's just hallucinating. They never say. So, yeah, that is, that's an example of how how mature Thomas used to be, and how even when it was kind of unrealistic, it was actually, you know, cool. Um, um, all right, another example, um, the deputation, like the deputation, not only that, they actually had good morals, you know, like unique morals. They didn't teach you how to count the 10 or, you know, say please or thank yous or anything. You know, they actually... You know, challenged younger kids. You know. Okay, here's an example. The deputation. When Zomat wants to send one of Donald Douglas away, the others all band together. And they see their point of view. So Tom Hat sees their point of view and decides to let them stay. You know, I think Thomas 1 over 2 Emory 3 explained it best. You know, that episode teaches that standing your ground is common in kids' shows, especially when it comes to dealing with bullies. But in this case, it's about... You know, standing your ground against authority figures. You know, which is unique for a kid's show. You know, it, it challenges young viewers. And when they get a job or something, there's something wrong at their job. They know that if something is wrong, you know, they tell it to their boss. And if the boss don't listen, I mean, but if the boss does listen, you know, they might. You know, if their boss at their job does listen, you know, they, you know, they can, they can change their ways. They can change, not change their way, so I'm not exactly a good person, but, you know, change, you know, their decision. 
you know, change the way they're doing something. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's a good example of how Tom teaches unique morals that you can stand your ground even against authority figures, you know, if they're doing something that's wrong. Because Donald and Douglas are actually really, you know, helpful engines, you know, they, they're they excellent when it comes to clearing the snow off the tracks and stuff. And, you know, they're real hard working and stuff like that. And the, the Tom Hat sees this eventually when Percy tell Sir Tom Hat. And um yeah Sir Tom Hat lets both of them stay. And aliens are happy. So yeah. If you want like a good a more in depth video, I would recommend watching Thomas one over two Henry Three's video, The Simple Appeal to Thomas. But still, this is just bullshit. It's, it's bastardized bullshit. That's what it is. Have any little... And so... And if anyone's like... Oh, kids might like it. Well, just because kids like it doesn't mean it's good for them or they deserve it. And when they get older... They won't appreciate it. They'll be like... What the fuck was wrong with me back then? You know? <laughs> for liking this shit. With classic Thomas episodes, you could watch them as an adult and realize that there's actually some cool stuff that you never noticed as a kid, but you actually like the episode a lot more now as an adult because of that little thing you see, like in Cranky Bugs. I actually really like that episode even that more as now I'm older now because of the character development from Gordon and that one scene where he's the only one to actually say thank you to Cranky after he freed them all from the broken shed. And there's plenty of other examples I can give. Billions of examples I can give with good Thomas episodes. Where it was more than just a kid show. Where you can watch it as a kid and like it. But as an adult, you can enjoy it a lot more. For one reason or another. Either for the nostalgia. Or something you didn't notice as a kid. But realized that the episode's even better now. Because you actually you know, notice that little cool thing. And it, the Tom is, like I said, you know, it had variety to almost just, Tom's had more mature stuff in it than most kids' TV shows. I agree with what Thomas 1, number 2, Henry 3 said. You know, there's more, more mature stuff in it than most kids' shows even do. And I just don't mean dark stuff. Like, they use big words like dignified, celebrity, and deputation, and stuff like that. You know? And in the railway series, and they also use, you know, boastful. And, you know pompous and stuff, you know, big, you know, cool words, like cheeky and stuff, you know, cool words, you know, that most people don't really know or don't really use, <sighs> Sharon, Sharon Miller era is better than bullshit, yeah, I said it, but Sharon Miller is better than this, Bro, Big Avengers is better than this, the hit era is better than this, Andrew Brenner, it wasn't as good to the Andrew Brenner era, season 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Yeah, it wasn't as good to the classics uh, by any means. But it was still good. It was still really good. Every time I watch, rewatch a Brenner era episode, I, I can't, I'm blown away by how good it is. Because, you know, it's the same animation as the Big World Big Avengers era and the Sharon Miller era. And it is still really fun to watch. Not as good as the classic episodes, but you get what I mean. Granted, not every episode from that era was good. Same with the classics, but again, you know what I mean. <sighs> so yeah. Just fuck this reboot and fuck Mattel for trying to turn us in to a crappy kids show. Trying to turn Thomas into a crappy kids show. For an audience that doesn't exist. So yeah. I'm Rebic Flame. I just. I didn't want us to go into a large rant about why the new Thomas sucks. But I had to get into that. Just so you get my point. So yeah.
thanks for watching. And I hope you can understand why I don't like this. I mean, if any Thomas fan, like, if you do like the way this looks, that's fine. I did see the trailer, by the way. So, yeah, if you do like this, I mean, go ahead. I just saying why I don't. And, like I said, if a little kid likes this, it doesn't mean that they deserve it. Or that it's the best thing ever for them. Because if I want kids of my own, I want them to actually watch good stuff that they can enjoy when they become an adult. And they'll look back on it and appreciate it. Not only for the stuff they did like as a kid, but stuff that they didn't even notice as a kid. And, like it even, and they'll like it even more for that. So yeah, thanks for watching. This is one big pile of sh This is a bastard in the form of a show. The season 25. That's what it is. Anyways, thank you for watching. And see you in the next video.